Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today it is going to be a lore speculation video because, well, some of the most interesting dialogue in quite some time has actually made its way onto the PTR. It could be hinting at the future direction of the game and in any case, it's just really cool. So this all happens in the new raid when players make their way to Varimathras with the Horde and the Alliance getting different lines of dialogue. But first, just a quick little primer on who Varimathras is and um, because his uh, basically his past does tie in quite a lot to what we're going to be covering. So, right, he was involved in handling the Scourge while Archimonde assaulted the World Tree in Warcraft 3. After that, he basically helped Sylvanas attempt to kill Arthas in, um, in later on in War 3, and he sort of ended up joining the Forsaken. He was a friendly NPC and quest giver to Horde players in vanilla, well, basically pre-Wrath, and canonically, he fought alongside uh, Sylvanas a few times. Of course, it was all a complete scheme the whole time. He slowly was spreading his influence within the Forsaken, and he ended up playing his hand during the Wrathgate event during Wrath, but eventually was defeated. Uh, when we come across him in patch 7.3, he's basically being tortured for his failure. Um, essentially, he has a pretty damn strong link to Sylvanas, she very much hates him, and that will tie into what we're about to cover. So, there's two sections of dialogue, one for the Horde and one for the Alliance. I'm going to get it going with the Alliance. So, the first bit of dialogue. So, your Alliance still endures longer than I expected. Though she has already planted the seeds of its downfall. She is patient, that one. Okay, so first of all, who is she in this? It doesn't seem like Jaina has any sort of evil plan that she's been working on for the time that we've known her. Now, sure, she could explode in the next expansion, but she only rage quit at the start of Legion, which is hardly a sign of some long, patient plan that she's had. Now, he is making it sound like whoever this person is, they've been plotting the downfall for quite some time indeed, which definitely leads me away from Sylvanas. But let's listen to the next line before I move on. When your thrones run red with betrayal, when your holy places burn, and the shattered mask hangs above your hearth, only then will you know, and it will be too late. Okay, so this pretty much is the big one. The Broken Mask is the banner of the Forsaken, and here it is suggested that key Alliance territories are captured by Sylvanas' forces. Note that he doesn't um, talk about the Horde banner, just the Broken Mask banner of the Forsaken. This kind of suggests that, well, if everything's true, then it wouldn't be a combined, like, you know, assault from all the Horde races if they were putting up the Forsaken banner. Now, Sylvanas herself has been, you know, experimenting with the New Plague, and there was all the stuff that went on with Gilneas, and of course in Stormheim, so it could suggest that she has some sort of plan in wait. It could be that Sylvanas basically called the retreat on the Broken Shore so that she could take leadership after she knew that Vol'jin would probably die from his injury, and at the same time, she knew that if they pulled out, it would allow for a massive alliance loss to happen, making them far easier to conquer in the future. Now, the cinematic wasn't actually shot like that, but I think it is a valid interpretation. Now, we'll get into some of the more uh, fishy situation with Vol'jin later on in the Horde section of the video. This line also mentions our thrones running red with betrayal, and that sort of implicates someone within the Alliance as a potential enemy. Jaina is perhaps the first that jumps to mind given all of the, you know, Jaina's a Dreadlord expansion talk and all that stuff, but I really don't think she would kill the Alliance leaders, um, especially Anduin. She seems to have known him from when he was tiny, and I just can't see her character doing that. Now, they could be referencing the Horde and the Alliance having some sort of treaty that gets broken in a bloody fashion that would certainly count as a betrayal and would allow for big Alliance losses at the hands of Sylvanas without making Jaina some sort of crazy old, you know, void god person and would still fulfill that line about betrayal in Varimathras' dialogue. Now, finally, do remember that one of the Ilganoth lines is the boy king serves at the master's table three lies he will offer you. And, uh, well, I don't really think that Anduin himself has been directly corrupted, but it could suggest that someone at the court is. That could tie into the betrayal that has been talked about here. It wouldn't be the first time an Alliance uh, politician has unknowingly end up serving their enemies because of the leadership being infiltrated. Okay, time for the next bit of dialogue. It matters not. You are blind to the true darkness closing in around you. 
And really, there's not much here. It's just suggesting that the event that he's talking about with the throne running red and the betrayal and all that doesn't really matter in the larger scheme of things due to the void. All right, so let's move on to the horde lines. She found me at last. Set her underlings to finish the job. Well, this first one is dead simple. It's a reference to Sylvanas as leader of the Horde, who we, of course, took orders from in Stormheim, so it's fair to say that um, we're her underlings. All right, next line. Tell me, when she seized your throne of hides and bones, was your allegiance forced? No. I'd wager you surrendered it willingly, or were convinced you did. Okay, so the throne of hide and bone is quite clearly the Horde throne in Orgrimmar, which is where Vol'jin died. Now, it seized it? That's an interesting one. Vol'jin was not directly killed by Sylvanas, and it would be a bit of a cheap story, a bit of storytelling to just say that she slipped him some poison. Um, I looked at the Broken Shore trailer again, and basically she is standing still looking at the key Horde characters, and when Vol'jin is stabbed... She does seem upset and shocked by it, but I mean, she easily could have shot that Legion soldier, but still, I'm not going to look too much into that. Now, right after that, she does ride over to him, she picks him up, sounds the retreat. As I mentioned earlier, though, she could have known roughly what was going on here, that he would have died from that wound, and that this would lead the retreat to big alliance losses, so that could have been a part of a plan. Now, Vol'jin was in a compromised state when he made her leader. He said the lowest spirits basically said that the wound would take him soon. The spirits have granted me clarity, a vision, the whisper a name. Many will not understand. You must be warped. This was a very strange thing at the time, right? And uh, why were the Loa once Sylvanas? Now, what is a Loa? Well, a Loa is basically any entity that the trolls worship. That's just kind of their name for them. This means that Loa is a really broad group that also overlaps with stuff that, like the wild gods and things like that. Now, Vol'jin could have been talking about Bot Buon Swamdi, who's the Guardian of the Dead. Um, this uh, Death Loa, or the Death Element, is a connection with Sylvanas, but Buon Swamdi is actually he's an, is a troll, so it wouldn't make much sense for him to have a link with Sylvanas. It is possible that Vol'jin was seeing another Loa or some sort of illusion, perhaps to do with the Valkyr. It's really hard to say. The whole Loa thing is so open that we don't have a great amount of clues to go off here. But basically, what matters here is that the Varimathras dialogue is implying that something is not quite right. Now, he then says that we gave her leadership willingly, or at least were convinced that we did. Once again, this is pointing to more tomfoolery and malicious intent on the part of Sylvanas. Okay, next bit of dialogue. It matters not. You are blind to the darkness in your midst. So really, this one isn't super interesting in my view. It could be a few things. First, a direct, uh, direct reference to Sylvanas. Second, it could be a general pointer towards the Void stuff. Or third, it could refer to some sort of looming threat that is beyond the scope of just the Horde, uh, like, say, Nazoth. But... There we go. Now, there are a few other lines that I do want to bring up here. There is Ilganoth's third death line, which I'll play now. Oh. At the hour of her third death, she ushers in our coming. Okay, so Sylvanas has already died three times. Um, it could be that when she died to Crowley, something snapped in her, which could be the start, uh, start point of her making a plan to kill the whole lot of us, which would make it fit into this line. Um, other than that, uh, some people do say that the death... Uh, sentence is metaphorical, and the Jaina's first death was the toll that her closeness to Arthas took um, on her when he turned evil, the second death is the events at um, Theramore, and that she could have a potential third death, which is what would make her snap and betray the lot of us. Um, now, there is then the whole her heart is a crater and we have filled it line that you could take to directly reference Theramore and the whole left in her heart afterwards and everyone died, but supposedly she got past that from what the novel suggested. And I guess on that, we have seen talk of Azeroth itself having had two deaths, um, once with the Sundering, another time with the Shattering. So 
there could be something to that, um, as Azeroth, of course, is a she. Varmathris is referencing a she, though I don't really see too many other links there. Um, bar that whole, the King of the Diamonds has been made a pawn thing, which isn't a reference to what Varmathra says, but it's just a general thing hinting to something going on with the whole Magni and Azeroth situation. So, I guess, what do you guys think overall? I, you know, I really enjoy this type of, um, hint-based lore and deciphering it. I think it's a pretty cool form of storytelling, but that said, I really, really don't want either Jane or Sylvanas to go down the route of being some sort of generic flip-out, go-crazy because corruption type plotline. I'm really wary of Blizzard sort of messing up these characters um, or making, you know, one of them a shared villain for both the Alliance and the Horde. And what we do know is that Blizzard have dropped in some interesting lines and hints, possibilities. We know the betrayal, death, war, things like that have pretty much directly been referenced in the final raid of Legion, so it seems like it's pointing towards something anyway. Um, I just hope they don't make Jane and Sylvanas core enemies. That said, do like the idea of Alliance and Horde being a core part of the story, even if... It doesn't make a terrible amount of sense that our characters would, you know, go to war after sort of banding together for the greater good and all that, but hey, it's about gameplay. Anyway, there you go, a bit of a look at some of the new patch 7.3 lore and how it could be pointing towards the future. Um, I've done a few other videos covering some of the general lore stuff, but I thought this one was particularly prescient because, well, Jane and Sylvanas have been the talk of the town. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.